Okay, so this video is going to be a review of calculating mean standard deviations of discrete uh, distributions. Uh, we actually covered this first in displaying and describing data, but it'll also be a large part in uh, probability. So we're going to look at it again. So first off, uh, means. Basically, a mean is just sum up all the values and divide by the sample size. And that's what you've been doing whenever you take your grade average. You took all your grades and divided by the number of grades, and that gave you your average grade. Your variance was how far any end of one grade deviated from that average. So basically, the variance is the square of that. So on average, how far did your one grade or how far did your grades vary from the average? And here, we're just taking the square root of that of the variance, and that's our standard deviation. So back to the variance. The variance just tells you how far, on average, the individual distances are from the mean. Not the reason it's an average is because we're dividing by the sample size. But what happens when we're dealing with probabilities? Well, our formulas change, but they change slightly. And there's actually a great relationship between the two. And so we're going to look at that and put that into the calculator, let the calculator do the work. And we're also gonna talk about what you need to show in order to receive full credit. And truthfully, what you're going to have to show in the probability section will be more than you had to show in the displaying and describing because we were trying to set you up to be successful in probability. So we are going to um, take dice. We have a, a, you can roll a one, two, three, four, five, or six, and the probability of each one is one six. First off, we need to make sure that it's a valid probability distribution. So the sum of the probabilities need to equal one. In this case, they do. And we have to have our probability can't be less than zero, none are, and none are greater than one. So it looks like we have a valid probability distribution. So at that point, Let's go ahead and calculate our mean and our standard deviation with that. And I'm going to start off by putting that data in the calculator. I already have the one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'm just going to do something here just so you can see it. You may not want to do it this way because you could just put one divided by six each time. Oops. But I'm going to show you something a little bit different, not that you have to do it this way. But I'm going to go up all the way to the top of column L2. And I'm going to go second two, which tells me I'm looking at L2, and I'm going to divide it by six, and it gives me the probabilities. So, but it probably would, would have been just as easy to go one six, one six, one six. So now that I have that in there, I'm going to go to stat calc, one variable statistics. My data list is an L1, my X is an L1, and I do have a frequency, so I need to make sure I have my frequency on, which in this case, my frequency is the probability or how many occurrences, so second two. And I end up getting a mean of 3.5 and a standard deviation of 1.7078. Well, that's great that I got that value. However, if all I did was write down 3.5 and 1.7078, I would not receive credit. I have to show my work. Well, how do you show your work? Well, here's the formula. And the formula basically is the expected value of X equals the mean of X. You don't have to write that. Matter of fact, you never have to write a formula. You just need to show what goes into the formula is the individual X times its associated probability. So one is my individual X times my probability of one six. Plus this, that's symbol right there, that capital sigma means summation or add plus one six times my associated X, three times one six plus four times one six plus five times one six plus six times one six. And that would be my work shown. Now we can actually abbreviate it by just saying, you know what? One times one six plus dot, 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 plus six times one six. As long as you have the smallest and largest in there, you're good to go. So that's what I call bookends the smallest one and the largest one, and plus dot, 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 plus in between. For standard deviation or variance, it's much the same. So our variance formula is this, all right? So it's my individual X 
minus my mean. Well, what was my mean? Well, we just calculated it. Our mean was 3.5 times the associated probability, which is 1 6. So my first x was 1 minus 3.5 squared times 1 6 plus 2 minus 3.5 squared times 1 6 all the way to the end. Well, that gets very long and cumbersome, and, and that gives me the variance. It didn't give me the standard deviation. To get the standard deviation, I'm gonna to have to take the square root of this value of this 2.917. How would I show my work on that? So the way I would show my work is I would go one minus 3.5 squared times the one six plus dot, 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 plus, and the largest value of x, oops, I should put it, close this parenthesis, largest value of x was six. So six minus my mean or average of 3.5 squared times one six. And that would be adequate for my variance, but if I wanted my standard deviation, I just take the square root of that, all right? And that would be adequate work shown. And if I take 2.917, take the square root of it, I get about 1.7078. One thing real quickly I want to show you is please note that variance is not shown on this, all right? So if they ask you for the variance, you're going to have to take this value and square it. So if I take 1.7078 and raise it to the second power, I get my 2.916, 2.916. All right, a couple things. Prefer that you go to four decimal places. Please go to four decimal places and it helps to truncate. So four decimal places and truncate would be best. All right, that takes care of this video. Thank you.